Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today we'll be playing through another episode of Life is Strange 2. This is technically episode 4 but it's part 2 of that episode so Life is Strange just has a lot of numbers in it and that's okay. I would also like to take a second before we begin to shout out our patron of the day so now's a great time to hit that like button if you so choose. Today's patron of the day is Budokan. Budokan, thank you so so much for supporting on Patreon. SRG would not be the same without you. You have become an amazing member of the community. It's been amazing to have you in the discord. Just so, so appreciate every contribution that you make in time, energy, spirit, all of the above. So thank you, thank you so much. You are absolutely wonderful and I appreciate you supporting SRG more than I can say. And now everyone, let's get on to the gameplay video. Enjoy. Let's see what Karen has to say. So as far as we know, this is a nearby hotel room. He's all banged up and bruised from his journey from the hospital. He probably hasn't slept properly since he left the hospital. And you know, hospital sleeps are never good anyway, so he probably wasn't sleeping well in the hospital either. But then again, he's hasn't had a home for months now. So has he had a comfortable sleep since he left home? Hard to say. Man, didn't clean the pain away, but that felt good. It's kind of a grody shower, but a shower is a shower when you've been on the road nonstop. Damn, you look bad. Gotta change that dressing soon. Yeah, things never just stick back on very well. Karen seems to be on the move quite often. Well, then maybe you and Karen have something more in common now than you used to. <laughs> I hate this prompt. Get out. Instead of like, leave the bathroom or exit, it's just like, get out. All right, so we have some hotel Karen's exploring. Did she see one of Daniel's miracles? Kind of pretty. What is it? Wonder if she made it. So Karen did check it out. Wonder if she saw Daniel in action. Interesting. Okay. Should we look through Karen's stuff? I know I shouldn't peek, but... We're gonna look through her stuff. <sighs> Whatever. Glad to know she learned the lesson. Oh, brutal, Sean. Brutal. The lesson he's implying is at least she knows to protect herself so she doesn't have kids that she doesn't want. Ouch. Ouch for Karen but also ouch for Sean. It's like kind of also a self burn. I just, just ouch. Karen did her own road trip to get here. Ah, from Boulder City, Nevada. And Kingman, Arizona. So yeah, she'd been through. What does this say? Turning forward to look back, making the same choice twice. Twice, my solitude days and dreamy nights just to find myself looking forward to turn back. 
Okay, seems to be some poem that she scribbled to herself. Let's see what the notebook says. Damn. Karen does like to capture the world around her. Well, this is a mess. Tracing closer every mile, my heart goes racing, sore. I remember, know the feeling. There's no fighting back that beating, tearing apart my core. Early morning blues, coffee, red-eye truckers and sad families, bad eggs. Not the waitress's fault. She is a quick, hurried one. Probably ending a long night shift. Tag says Clementine, 22-ish, redhead dyed brunette. Eyebrows and skin tone don't lie. Irish descent? Owner's daughter, maybe? Mahoney's? Vague, pol polite smile, busy mind, mildly clumsy, looks distracted, anxious? Uh, tag says Clementine? Why would a 22-year-old be wearing a tag? Uh, I don't really get that. Young cook called her Clemmy. Brother? Boyfriend? Boyfriend. Apologizes when the orders are late and she's the one getting roasted. Do mom and dad know you're dating on the job, Clemmy? Mixing up work and love seldom makes a good match. That a brand new baby bump under the stained apron? It's 2017 and young folks are still busy making babies. I guess nothing ever really changes. So, I, I don't know, like, I get the feeling that, oh, tag, her name tag, her name tag, her, her, her waitress name tag, says Clementine. I get it. Okay. <laughs> so the question is why she's so interested in this waitress and, like, profiling her. This country is just way too big. Very generic thing to say. Karen was always into low tech. I even think it's the one she had back then. Over a decade ago? This thing is killing my back. I got bruises on my bruises. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Daniel has been brainwashed by a cult. He wants to stay with them, and I fucked up with this reverend. I just fell right into her trap. I'm so stupid. Also, dot dot dot, Karen. WTF is she doing here? How did she find us? Don't want anything from her. Nada. So that's the latest journal entry. This is a sketch of the reverend like, possessing Daniel, it looks like. We've come a long, long way, buddy. I really should finish reading this someday. Take? Sorry. I still have no game. And the house always wins. Let's see what Karen has to say. Be right back. <sighs> we'll find out. Popped out for supplies. I'll grab some food in case you want to eat. New socks and shorts in the bathroom. All yours, if they fit. Might be a good time to contact Jacob. His number is on the letter he sent. Be right back, Karen. Jeez. It only took Supermom eight years to give a shit. Dear Mrs. Diaz, my name is Jacob and I worked with your son, Sean and Daniel, on a farm in California. There were some problems and Sean went missing. I'm with Daniel now in Haven Point, Nevada. He gave me this P.O. Box address, so if you get this, I think Daniel might be in danger. He needs help to get out of here. I can tell you more if you contact me at this number, 775-555-0118. Please hurry. Thank you, Jacob. Interesting. Okay, so 
up till now, we didn't really know what the deal was with Jacob and how that connection happened. But now we're seeing that Jacob, to keep Daniel safe, went with Daniel to Haven Point because I think that's Jacob's hometown. Right, because his sister lives there, right? So took him to his church and Daniel, it seems like on accident, showed them that he has powers and Jacob was the one that noticed, okay, this isn't right. Something's wrong here. Reverend is being weird about this. I think Daniel might be in danger. So it was Jacob that rang the alarm and said, Karen, we need you to save your son, basically. Interesting. Because we weren't sure if Jacob was like in on it with the Reverend until this point. But it seems like Jacob was not trying to get Daniel involved in this. Okay. This place is quite remote. Good. At least nobody will be looking for me here. Ooh, I can draw. And I shall. Oh my gosh, they made the bandage look so good. How it like picks up dirt on the edges. I got a few moments to myself. So accurate. So, let's practice. I could see myself stopping by this motel during a road trip. <laughs> Taking a dip in the pool after a long ride. <sighs> These mountains really inspire me. I guess that's an okay start. What a weird cut. None of the other going. drawings had a weird, like, zoom in on Sean's face. I wonder who lives around here. It's so wild and huge. Okay. Just draw now. Don't think about anything else. <laughs> something's weird with this drawing. It like something's glitchy about this Gotta particular. I'm ready draw. to draw now. And now there's a kraken in it. Great. All right, back to reality, dude. I'm not going out. Better wait for Karen in here. Well, that solves that. Okay, so Karen told us to call Jacob, but, and gave us his phone number, but we don't have an option to look on the mobile phone yet. So. Time to hit up Jacob. What? I guess we're using the huh. tablet. This isn't her tablet. Oh, did she steal it? Struggles with. Too many open apps, but should be okay for basic browsing slash geolocation. What? Geolocate degrees? Why? Why geolocate degrees? I don't get it. Password is 112708. Hope you find your son. Your son? Oh! Jacob left this? Maybe Jacob left this for Karen. Okay. Yay, technology. She came prepared. Oh, there's a lot of reading. Here we go. Welcome to your new life at the Universal Uprising Church Haven Point. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. So that 
kind of references the place in the Bible where the Bible says, you know, convert others to our cause. The Haven Point Community. Haven Point, Nevada is a living oasis where individuals and families can live out their faith in a community dedicated to the teachings of Christ. All who share our faith are welcome to join us build a bridge to the Lord and his eternal estate. Hospitality. Beloved, it is... (laughs) Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are. John 1, 5, um, 3 John 1, 5. I, I never remember how you're supposed to say the numbers. Gratitude. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 8, 118, 24. Forgiveness. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians 4, 31, 32. Mission. Accept the Lord. Spread the word of Jesus. Keep faith with the community to seek and save the lost. Luke nineteen ten. A message from Reverend Mother Lizbeth Fisher. As the pastor of our holy church, I have devoted my life and love to the teachings of the gospel and our Lord. I was blessed since childhood to be given this calling, and it is my privilege to spread the word and preside over this loving, righteous community of Haven Point. I look forward to meeting each and every one who seeks out our humble refuge. Together, we will begin the journey to new life, guided by the spirit of the Lord and Savior. Savior and Savior. And Savior. He's the Savior. Bless you all. The reverend mother doesn't look too humble. No, see, that's the problem. She has no humble. A Slice of Haven Point by Robert Neal One of the great mysteries of Nevada is how it balances the Holy Spirit with the Holy Dollar. Few tourists travel from around the world to seek religion here, but in the tight-knit Christian community of Haven Point, Nevada, a charismatic pastor has inspired a devout following, a.k.a. a cult. As she told me in an interview at her peaceful church office, Reverend Lizbeth Fisher has spent her whole life as a humble disciple of the Lord, feeling the call to share his love and glory in this dark age. I had a powerful experience as a child that put me on the righteous path. She smiles gently and touches my hand. Quote, but this is not about me or my story, as anybody in our wonderful church can tell you. End quote. And tell me they did. The members of the Universal Uprising Church speak with hushed awe of their pastor and how she inspires them. Quote, Reverend Fisher just wants to share her blessings with us, end quote, says Corey Johnson, 34, a recent addition to the congregation. Quote, I was pretty cynical before I went to one of her revivals. You could feel the electricity when she spoke. People were crying, including me, end quote. Looks like a roach motel. Well, this is our hotel. Nobody will find me there. She just googled cheap motel, Haven Point, Nevada. Sand Snake Motel. Two stars. Beds are super uncomfortable, but it's cheap. Nice pool, but dusty as fuck. Nice roadside motel. Cool staff. Hot Dog Man Mustard Party 2. Play now. Can I click it? Man. Okay. So here's what I don't understand. He's like, time to call Jacob. Oh, we'll use this phone. That makes much more sense. Hello? Jacob, it's me, Sean. Sean? No way. I've been waiting to hear from you for months. Sketchbook? Yeah. Where are you? You have to come here, Sean. I know. I'm not far. In a motel. Good. Listen, I I can't talk right now. I gotta go. Wait! Daniel, how's he doing? Meet me tomorrow afternoon on Brandy Highway. There's a, a, a junction just above Haven Point. There's a, a, a wild mice ranch billboard there. I'll be there at four. Jacob, wait! I can't talk, Sean. Be there tomorrow. Please. Damn, he couldn't really talk. All this is so messed up.
I'm so drained. Okay, so our next objective is just to wait for Karen to come back. Ah, there we go. We were just sitting here, but all right, we'll sit back down. Let's just rest while I wait for her. If she comes back. Interesting. That's supposed to be a POV shot, but it doesn't have his eye blocked out. What's going on with this chapter? Hey. Was this when sorry COVID it took hit? So long. The fucking store was packed. How you feeling? <sighs> Nothing broken? Alter boys don't fight fair? Yeah. I'm okay. Double cheese, no onion, right? Just how That'll you do. used to like it when you were seven. Double cheese is very expensive though. I'm kind of surprised that Karen sprung for it. Got you some gauze and uh, antibacteria stuff for your eye. Mm. Hey, don't wolf that down. Come on, at least Karen. Take a breath. <sighs> like Chill. You care. Sean. I do. <sighs> Come on, Karen. Don't act all hurt. It's too late. Where were you when I broke my leg when I was 13? Not with me. When Daniel got a bad flu a couple of years ago, he didn't sleep next to him every night. Where were you? Where were you? Fair enough. So let's talk, because we do have to get your brother out of a cult. I'm listening. How did you two survive alone on the road for that long? No, we're asking questions. We, we're the ones asking questions, ma'am. We just got lucky. And got some help along the way. Total strangers. We even had our own little family. Good. How did you go to Beaver Creek? You know, I don't have to answer your questions, right? Exactly. You're right. So tell me what you want from me, Sean. Nothing, Karen. I mean, what do you want from me? A fucking hug? Hey, I just want you to know what I did. And why. If you care. So, ask me anything. <sighs> All right. Why did you bail on us? I wasn't meant to be a wife or a mother. I thought I was supposed to. I tried to pretend for many years, but I wasn't happy, and the urge to leave just became unbearable. I had no other choice. Are you serious? You chose this life. You fell in love. You made your own choices, right? Making your own choices doesn't mean you can never fool yourself, Sean. After I had Daniel, you were about eight, and Esteban's garage was getting busy. There was so much going on around me, yet somehow I just felt that my own life was just slipping away. It felt like an empty shell. Sean, it was the hardest decision I ever made. I knew I might never see you all again, but I took that responsibility. But you didn't take responsibility. You just left. You didn't take responsibility at all. That's not responsible. That's running. That's easing your own sense of self, not realizing that you left this whole family, three people, with this huge hole in their lives. It's not good enough for Karen to have needed to leave. She could have very well left in a dignified, respectful way, still been a part of their lives and didn't. Or even just been honest, but clearly didn't, wasn't. 
I don't know. But let's find out. Let's let's find out if dad knew. If if Karen and dad had a conversation. Did dad know about all of this? I was honest with your father. We did family therapy, but it wasn't about him. It was me. If this were really me, I would probably be a little bit more accusatory, but in the essence of getting Daniel back, I'm going to make Sean be nice to her. He was heartbroken for months after you left. Years. I was too. I was in love with your father. He was the best person I ever met. But just not enough for you. Something was missing from the equation, yeah. I was. So what exactly are you doing in Nevada? You live around here? No. I'm uh, way out in Arizona. Sean, I told you. Your friend uh, Jacob wrote my P.O. box and said Daniel was in trouble. That's it. Arizona? Holy shit. It's just lizards and rocks. Yes, I found something there. New York didn't really do me good, so... Yeah, okay. Think I've heard enough. I didn't have a choice, Sean. We only have one life. And I didn't want mine to be spent in regrets. Your kids only have one life For too, years, Karen. I fooled myself. Thinking I'd find satisfaction into what society expected me to be. And that was my mistake. I hope someday you can understand that. But I never stopped caring about you. Well, you didn't show it, it's so worth. you might as well have. I am sorry for hurting you and Daniel and Esteban. I am disappointed in this woman and her conversation. She, I mean, Sean said it exactly right. She made choices. She got the privilege of making a choice. But these kids didn't choose to be born to Karen. Lost in the world, never meant to be a mother Karen. You don't choose your parents. <sighs> I don't like this, Karen. Anywho, um, now my rant has made me forget. Oh, she said I'm sorry. Mm, again, in the essence of doing what's best for Daniel, we're going to be the bigger person. Because sometimes kids got to be the bigger person in the room. Sucks, but sometimes it's got to go like that. I know you are, Karen. It still doesn't change the way I feel. Of course not. I know I can't change the past, Sean. I don't think you would. I need some air. You could also see in that conversation that Sean's, like, blistered feet were all broken open, too. So he probably should have been wearing flip-flops in that shower, but... You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Sean, whatever you want to say to me, this is the time. Let's just get it all out in the open, see what happens. Um... So... What did you do when you left? Where did you go? I pursued some dreams and failed. Learned the lessons. I guess all this time I tried to find out what really matters to Which me. Which doesn't involve a husband and two kids. It does to a lot of people. And I totally respect that. Just not to me. 
I wasn't good at making plans, which is what most of modern life is about, right? School, job, marriage, asked my mom and dad. They wanted me to follow their rules, their faith. Oh, and I tried, but I wanted to find my own way, with no security blanket. Family, religion, social norms. It's just all about security, after all. But it all just looked like a sweet golden jail to me. I tried to escape that. I'm gonna call this, though. You just sound... immature. Like a kid running away from home. You're right. I do. But I think people should know who they are. And not fake it for anybody. So instead of this being a moment for Sean to just say what he needs to say and get it out, it's become more questions for Karen. So I wonder if they just kind of broke up the conversation because it felt too long in one place. I mean, I get you wanted to leave and stuff, okay? But why would you ghost us like that? Not even a fucking birthday card. I just... I thought if I vanished, you would all move on. But I wanted to contact you guys so many times. I almost did. Yeah, that wasn't you thinking they could move on without you. That was you felt guilty. But you wanted a clean break from us. Yeah. I didn't want to be a part-time, pissed-off mother not fair to any of you. I left when Daniel was still very young, so he wouldn't remember me. Cool plan, Mom. You heard Daniel way worse. He thought you took off because of him. I know. I hope I can make it up to you, Daniel, someday. I can start by getting his ass out of that church cult whatever I almost don't want to ask did you miss us because I feel like of all the different questions Sean asked in this dialogue tree this one is gonna the answer is gonna suck the most it's either gonna be some version of of course I missed you but I thought it was better for you if I wasn't in your life which is total BS and then if she's like, no, I didn't miss you, then she's a terrible person. This answer is gonna suck. <laughs> so, did you ever actually miss us? Or dad? Of course, Sean. I do miss your father. He had such a big heart. He could brighten up a rainy day. That was like his superpower. But above all, I missed watching you grow up. See how you Who's saw it? the world. I missed sharing these moments with you, Sean. You chose that. So annoying. I knew this answer was gonna just make me angry. I knew. Well, that's your loss. I don't expect you to believe me, but I mean it. <sighs> Whatever. You sound so... careless. It's like you can't even realize how much pain you've caused. I do care. It's why I'm here. To help you and your brother. If I didn't step up to help him now, I couldn't live with myself. Again, it's about your guilt and your feelings. This woman. This is a broken woman. Are we gonna share a smoke with her? Brianna is not for smoking. Brianna's always against smoking, but Daniel's not here. 
And oh, man. Esteban hated when I smoked. Well, it timed out. I hate you it when it doesn't tell you it's timing out. Death. Fuck. Life can be so cynical sometimes. I remember cynical? you would smoke sometimes. Long ago. I think we ironic much, is maybe what you meant. when we did... I would go out on the porch and light up so I could calm down. Esteban would come over and ask for a drag. And then we'd just look up at the sky and watch the stars. Or the planes. I do miss that. I used to do the same with my best friend Lila. Sitting on the porch. Just letting time go. That's when you know someone is good to you. When you can just sit together. <laughs> Shut the hell up and... Watch the universe do its own thing. So now we're just going to sit here and watch the universe do its thing, I guess. I don't know if this is supposed to represent some sort of healing moment with Karen or what, but I don't feel healed. I don't feel like the wounds are healing over. <clears throat> I think that's a really big difference between Life is Strange 1 and Life is Strange 2 is in Life is Strange 1, the quiet moments are really moments where you get to relax. But in this game, they give you these quiet moments when everything sucks. Because everything has sucked for these boys since episode one. Their situation has just gotten worse and worse and worse. It has not gotten better. So even in this quiet moment, you don't get to just enjoy it. I don't know, is that, is that the case for anybody else? Does anybody else just enjoy the music and sit and, and chill in these moments, in these, these chill moments in the game? Because all I am ever in this game is, is tense. I don't know if that's by design. I don't know if it's because it's 2020. I don't know. Oh, I don't know why. It's just... Sad. We should go back inside. I gotta change this dressing. Okay. Let's go. Now remember, saline solution, then swab with cream. Then fresh Sean, gauze. I know I can't change the You're past. still on this, Karen? Leave us alone for a second. For what I did. But this is about helping your brother. You gotta trust me this one time. I know. Oh, his feet. It's still hard. But yes. We have to be a team to rescue Daniel. We can do it. Okay. How? We need to get in touch with this Jacob. He obviously knows a lot more than us about the church. Well, I called him when you were out. We can meet with him tomorrow. Okay, good. I also got these, just in case. Walkie-talkies? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Better take care of the eye. So, do you need any help with that? Interesting. Um. Yeah, let's take the help. Yes. Let's take the help. Thanks. Sure. So, you feel like telling me the story here? When we have time. Gotcha. I mean, in theory, the story would have been in the news, right?
If the story had been in the news, Karen would have read it, I assume. Ah, see, Karen's following the steps. First, sterile gauze, saline, then swab with cream. How does Karen know? I don't know. This looks so uncomfortable. Here, try this on. Ooh, a pirate eye patch. Yar. But you should Not have I fresh know. gauze on, though. Great. Thank you, Karen. Big day tomorrow, so we should get some rest. Yeah. I'm ready to get Daniel. And then what? Puerto Lobos? Is that still on the docket? You really think you can get through the border? Oh, my nerves are racked. Racked, I say. Ooh, look at the birds. Sure he's gonna show up? He better. He promised. Well, if he doesn't find us, we'll find him. I can't believe how much crap you guys have been through. You don't even know the half of it, Karen. Makes me want to punch in the face each and every asshole that got in your way. Yeah. Good thing we got to meet amazing people, too. Life on the road is all about that. The sweet encounters. Hope I can see them again someday. Look at what the birds are doing. Oh, Weird no. stuff. So tell me about Daniel. What's he Swarming. like? Swarming. He's a little rascal. He never stops. Just like you did, you know? Heads up. Is that him? Yep. Wait here. Sean! Why, hello! What happened? Jacob? Jake, I'm not mad, but you better explain everything. I didn't know where else to go. Listen, I, I saw Daniel come back to the camp that night. Like he was in shock or something. Then I heard all these sirens and I got scared. I just, I packed a few things. I, I took a blanket from your tent and we, we left together. I also kept the cash you made on the farm. Uh, it's in my car. Great. I would like it you back, did please. Right, Jake. Thank you. You have no idea what he looked like when I found him that night, Sean. He was in bad shape, with a gunshot wound, and all by himself. I, 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 I couldn't just leave him there. What about the others? Hannah, Penny, what happened to them? They, they ran over to Merrill's place when they found out Finn and Cass were gone. That was the last time I saw them. Then on our way out here, Daniel told me more about what happened that night. How scared he was. The blast. Daniel feels he's got to redeem himself for what he did. Oh. I need to get to him, Jacob. He's not guilty of anything. I should have protected him better. I'm telling you to be careful with the Reverend Mother. She's waited her whole life for somebody like Daniel. The Reverend knows how to manipulate people. She's good at this. He he wants to stay with her. Because of the Daniel, guilt. Daniel, 
has faith in the Reverend now. Yeah, not afraid of that Lisbeth of yours. I'm getting Daniel out of here. Uh, come on. There's no way they're gonna let you take him away. Well, too bad. We're not gonna ask for their permission. You must be Jacob. I'm Karen. Hi. Okay. I don't know if you want to do this, but I... I have an idea. I think school must be over by now, but Lisbeth will stay at the church with Daniel for his special classes. That'll give us time to sneak into the compound before we get to them. I'll be on the lookout. Keep watch, in case it all goes to shit. Sean, stay on the walkie. Sounds like a plan. One more thing. I, uh... We have to get my sister, too. Sarah Lee. Of really, course. Jacob? Come on, man. She's with your parents. I know. Please, listen, Sean. She's not safe here. She's sick. They believe in everything Lisbeth says. And she says she'll cure Sarah with prayers. I know you understand, right? Damn, Jake. We need his help, too, Sean. Okay, Jake. I'm listening. Lisbeth knows what's wrong with Sarah Lee. We just, we need to find her medical record. I think it's in her home office. Then I'll go get Sarah Lee while you get Daniel. Okay? Fine. Sure. I'm gonna trust you on this, Jacob. All good for you, Karen. What if Daniel won't go with you? He will. I know him. But what if he won't? But what if he won't? He wants to be an independent and he also wants to make up for what he thinks was a sin. The whole idea of of penance and and paying for your sins and cleansing your sins that's very appealing to someone who thinks they've done something very very wrong who thinks that they're broken with low self-esteem especially a manipulated manipulated child an easily influenced child that is a prime age for guilt that's also a prime age for structure which Karen? religion very much provides i'm in place let me know if you need anything. Be careful, Sean. Got it. Thanks. We gotta be careful now. If anything happens, let me do the talking, okay? Yeah, of course. Let's get this over with. Okay. Lisbeth's house is right behind the church, so in and out. Okay. In and out. Are you sure Lisbeth will have those files on your sister? Don't believe it. Watch out, Sean. There are people. Oh, shit. How many? Just three. A man with his kid on one side, and a woman alone on the other. Got it. Thanks. People aren't supposed to come and go around the church once the service is over. Better to avoid them if we can. Everything all right? Yeah, don't worry about me. I found the best hiding spot. The view is kind of great. Well, there's people cool. on either side. What are we supposed Be to careful, do? Be careful, though. You never know. Thanks, Sean. The back alleyway. Of course. This is why I discovered the back alleyway in the first place. Remember when I was back here and I was like, wow, it seems like this back alleyway sure is uh empty and there's nothing so, back here and no purpose did you grow up out of here no in another community back east when elizabeth came out here to start haven point my folks followed her and brought me along hmm. must have been hard on you kinda eight-year-olds don't want to go to church all day Ah, yes, the good old walk around and they'll never see you. 
They'll never remember you were right in front of them in their line of okay. sight. There it is. Looks empty. <sighs> Let's hope so. Can I help Luckily you? for us, we never close our door. A closed door is a closed heart, she says. The door is very clearly closed, but okay. Ah, uh, we don't have the option to call Karen, so I guess we're just going on in. Can't believe Daniel really lives in this depressing house. Oh, we did it. Now we have a little bit more time. Yes, we do. Nice work. So where are the files? Right there, in her office. Oh, of oh, course it's locked. Is it locked? Her open door speech I guess just it's a lie. locked heart. We gotta find a way in. Fuck. One more way that Lizbeth creates rules somewhere. she doesn't Maybe have to follow. Too cautious not to have a spare set around. Too cautious not to have a spare? I feel like if you were really that Whoa. cautious, you would not have a spare. Hmm. Lizbeth sure likes to be on pictures. Are you okay, Jake? Yeah. Yeah, no. It, it's just so full Creepy of memories and, and stuff. like Yeah. The evenings in here must be so much fun. Damn, this is so artless. A lot of the like wall art that people purchase for their homes is very artless. It's like generic because it's made to appeal to like the average person and as many of the average person as possible. Confide and convince? 15 steps to a good speech. <laughs> yeah, nice read for a saleswoman. That's literally what she is. She's a pitcher. And that right there is where we're going to be ending today's episode. There's a lot that I didn't expect in this episode. I don't even really know what else to say, so have a conversation with me in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. This game sure goes there, doesn't it? Ooh, anyways, uh, please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too. And of course, if you're so inclined, please subscribe to Strange Rebel Gaming so you don't miss the next video. That's all. I love you all. Bye!